Yes, it's coming in three, two, one. On the air with FDT TV, the premier West Ham and Arsenal football podcast, brought to you every Monday by Michael Hawes and Ian Vulcan. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry, I was just dancing to the old uh, intro song. Um, how you doing, Mike? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, well, been better. Been better. It's been a bit of a dull weekend for football. Uh, mm-hmm. But big news first. Well, it's not really big news, is it? It's been a long time coming. Ollie's no longer at the wheel. The wheels on the bus have fallen off. Fallen off. Yes. I yeah, have. Uh, you, you called it. You called it a couple of weeks ago, and to be honest, he probably should have gone at that point. Yes, oh, most most definitely. There, there is no <laughs> doubt about that, and I'm sure Man United fans will be glad to see the back of him. Um, however, uh, they brought Michael. Well, they've given Michael Carrick the reins. So, is it a case that he's going to be an in, interim charge for a little while, and then do really well, and then they're going to give him a contract, uh, like? six weeks before the, the season ends, and then it's going to be shit again. And we're going to carry on that cycle. Because you would have thought that a big club like Manchester United would already have a manager lined up, ready to take the reins. But it's what happens when Ed Woodward decides to uh, stay on a bit longer to help before he leaves. Mm. Yeah. Well, I heard on, uh, on TalkSport just after it was announced that apparently they've given Michael Carrick the, the reins until they find an interim manager. Well, that's why not just is that not what he would be exactly so why not just give him the reins until you find a permanent manager and uh, there were some some people that were phoning up saying i bet that conte's gutted (laughs) he didn't wait a couple of weeks and took the spurs job because he could now be sitting in the united (laughs) i don't know if well he he didn't want to work with woodward did he that's what he said um Mm. here's the thing with conte and i thought about this a little while when you look at his track record, it goes really well until he says, I want this player, and the owners go, no, we're not buying no. that player, and then he goes, right, well, I'm off then. So it'll be really good for 18 months at Spurs, and then he'll bugger off somewhere else. Um, 18 months, I reckon, come January, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you might not be too far off, knowing Daniel Levy. Um, I want I want to buy Lewandowski. So we can't get Lewandowski, but we can get uh, Salomon Kalou used to play for Chelsea. He, he <laughs> we can get him on the cheap with that do. Um, yeah, make it work. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but in terms of football results for us, not great. Yeah, not great. No. So we we did watch the highlights because obviously it was a three o'clock kickoff for West Ham. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm watching the highlights. We both decided maybe it probably should have been three two to West Ham. Um, yep. But as as I said last week, I was confident of a win, but we always start slow after an international break. And that seemed to be very much what it was. We couldn't find that clinical finish um, and the end product. And Wolves got a goal, which was a little bit sloppy defending from us. Uh, him and mm-hmm. his left in the open and just slammed one in. Um, so it was a loss. We still sit fourth, which is good. Um, it was the first good. loss in like nine competitive games. Um, so we move on to an easy game next week against Man City. So, yeah, man. Um, Let's not forget you are fucking massive. Well, well, we 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 drew against them, didn't we, in the League Cup, and then beat them on penalties. Um, so we go into their place, which some people say won't make a difference. I think we could, should be up for that game. Um, if we lose it, it doesn't matter. If we get a point, fantastic. If we win, even better. Um, Mm-hmm. I think we've got a, quite a difficult run of games at the moment um, and still travelling around Europe. So interesting times to come for West Ham. Let's see Let's see if we can sustain this uh, top four push. Mm-hmm. And then we got to Arsenal. And we actually got to watch mm-hmm. this game together, didn't we? And we did. For the first time in I don't even know how long that we've actually sat down and watched uh, a game together, other than a, f- a few weeks ago when we were watching some of the Champions League Dross when United were oh yeah playing Atlanta, Puna. A- a- Atlanta yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry that's it yeah, yeah ended up bloody winning that game and they were two 0 down at one point but um, no it was um, it was good to have a catch up um, not so good watching the football though because mm. I think we did all right for the first half an hour of the game there seemed to be a bit of a lovers tiff between Mikel Arteta and Jurgen Klopp and I think where 
had that been at home, it would have spurred the fans on, would have spurred the players on. Um, but it seemed to have the adverse effects and got all the Liverpool players up for yeah. the game. Sort of um, fell into the trap of it. Yes, yes. Um, but to be honest, mate, with uh, all jokes aside, I think we've we've been riding the crest of a wave for uh, a few weeks now. And um, we were overdue a drubbing. And I, I think that just kind of reiterates to me the um the the gulf in um quality between us and the top six sides uh or the certainly the top four sides so you like to have, yeah your man cities your chelsea's your liverpools um so we've lost to obviously the three top three clubs at the moment as you would expect with a fairly inexperienced side and our inexperience kind of um shone out over the weekend um there was some sloppy defending Sloppy passes, um, but I've got to say, I think my man of the match for that game was uh, Aaron Ramsdale. Yes, I know. Obviously, you think, uh, or you, we were discussing it on Saturday, and um, you're of the same, same, if not similar opinion. Yep, um, it could have been a cricket score. Ramsdale did pop up with uh, a few amazing saves, and um, for the once the the first goal went in, um, it just seemed to kind of unravel. A little bit too much for my liking and um well, we did see some records for arsenal over the weekend so before going into that game we uh, conceded the the fewest goals i think it was um <laughs> which very swiftly got uh knocked out um we created the fewest chance or scored the the fewest goals from open play uh, open play and there was another one as well which didn't read for good viewing but hey it was nice to be top of the league on uh, on something I for, even for a little while. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think the key point is there, we, we did discuss it on the day, is obviously Arteta is, is very set, very much like Guardiola. This is how we're playing football. If we're losing, this is how we're playing football. Might make some some tweaks of, of personnel on the pitch, but it does not change the system. Um, and I think, mm -hmm. as West Ham did the other week, we were very compact. We stood up Liverpool and we played direct. Um, and that's mm -hmm. something that you, you found to do. Every time there was a direct ball, you, you I, I was offside. Or you did get a little break on a last-ditch tackle um, or mm -hmm. got elbowed in the face by Mane. Uh, but we'll get <laughs> onto that in a bit. Um, and, and I think maybe that that's what Arteta needs to potentially work on. I know, obviously, the personnel will get better as they get more mature, more game time. But but maybe that plan B that we've yet to, to really see from him. Um, yeah. And, yeah, you are right. Aaron Ramsdale was unbelievable in that game. Uh, I think he was unlucky with some of the some of the goals he conceded, um, but but for me he was uh, hands down the best player on the pitch for Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. But again, um, I think just uh, this is something I was thinking about over the week over the course of the weekend. Um, I know at the start of the season that uh, I said that my expectations were top four and some silverware. I think I've had uh, after seeing some of the performances put out recently and obviously our form against the uh the top four teams or the the top teams again such as Chelsea, Man City and Liverpool. Yeah. You can see there is a gap there at the moment, but obviously with the likes of United, obviously West Ham having a bit of a run at the moment, um Tottenham with their new manager, it's it's the the top six I think is going to be more of a realistic expectation, I think. I think at the start of the season was kind of getting a little bit too big for my boots. And it may seem like I'm kind of backtracking a little bit, but having thought about it seriously, you're looking at the age of some of the players that we've got within the team. Uh, it's fair. It's a fairly inexperienced team. Obviously, you have got some of your senior players in there, like your Aubameyangs, your Lacazettes and, and that. And obviously, we've got the likes of Xhaka, who's currently injured. Um, I thought mate, Ainsley Maitland-Niles was, was okay when he come on. Yep. But... Um, I think give give that team another couple of seasons together, and I would say within two to three years, I would like to see us challenging for that top spot. Um, but for for me, I would like to amend my expectations slightly and to be a little bit more realistic. Um, I think that the top four is going to be a bit too much out out of our reach this year. Um, so getting back into Europe, possibly through the the course of the Europa League, I still think we should try and aim for some silverware. Yep. 
Um, but getting top six and uh, a piece of silverware, I think, is a more realistic expectation well, for us this year. When you when you look at it, if West Ham weren't in such good form um, and had such a good run, you probably you would have been fourth, wouldn't you? Because you were fifth for a little while. Um, obviously, Brighton are flying high at the minute as well. So they that's sort of the two teams you'd expect to drop off more. Tottenham, you, they're always going to be have a little bounce, aren't they, with a new manager as Conte, and they're going to be competitive this year. Whether they will get points, mm. uh, I mean, they, I think they won that game against Leeds, I don't know if you saw it, on just sort of sheer will of Conte. Um, mm. That's all they won it on, because they were awful in the first half. Um, but yeah, I, I think top four is a possibility. I think it just depends on how the next few weeks how how do both teams face the adversity of that loss after not losing for such a time um, yeah how do they bounce back and i, I think that's going to be the make or break for both west ham and arsenal do you put in a, a another subpar performance or do you come back at your, your sort of fighting best um hmm. which is how say people have won championships isn't it in the past um yeah but i think this is well deserved. We haven't done it in a while because actually, most of the decisions have been all right this season. But uh, do you want to give us a little intro to the next section, Mike? Oh, of course, I will. Um, viewers' ears, discretion is advised during this period. I will give you a two second warning. One, two. Va, bloody va, bloody va, bloody va. Oh, yeah. So, you knew it was all coming. Um, so, first things first, Jota scored for you, didn't he? So, yep. we're going to talk about it in, in, in the, the Arsenal-Liverpool game because that's where it was most apparent. Jota shouldn't have been on the pitch from the week before when he slapped off Bonner in the face, uh, giving him a bloody nose, but that wasn't looked at by VAR. Uh, so, he scored. So, that, that that's one goal we can strike off. Mane scored one and assisted one, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So, but he should have been off the pitch already. Uh, because of a clear elbow. I want to say it was on Tomiyasu. Yes. Uh, but I, I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but that wasn't looked at by VAR. But the ref said was fine, which is what caused a tiff between Arteta and Klopp, because Klopp went, that's not foul. Yet if it was against someone at Liverpool, it would have been a red card every time um, without yep. having to be reviewed by VAR. But VAR didn't review it at all, um, nope. which I think is strange. And the other one was a late tackle also by Mane. Uh, when the ball had gone off the pitch and then he went in the back of the player and took the player out. Uh, when both ball and player are off the pitch. Um, mm -hmm. So again, didn't get reviewed by VAR and the ref said it was fine. Um, so if you ask me, Liverpool should have to, by default, change the name to LeVar with VAR in the title. Big capital letters, Paul. Yep. Um, because we've said it over and over again, they don't get any... VR decisions go against them, even when mm -hmm. throughout the season we have seen those looked at for lesser things and given red cards for lesser things. Uh, yep. And that's 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 the last two seasons and this season as well. We've seen examples of it. Um, mm -hmm. So, it, do you, does it make you feel like there is an agenda towards the so-called big clubs like Liverpool and Man say Manchester United were getting a, the brush of the green last year? Funny enough, yep. here's the thing. And I did look this up earlier, but I didn't save me notes. I thought I did. Liverpool had less VAR decisions last year than they did the season previous when they won the title. Um, they just finished fourth last year. Only just. They had a bit of a surge at the end of the season. Manchester United finished second last season and have had a lot less VAR decisions this season than they did last season. So I think it does go to show that VAR, if... Your club is being favoured by the officials that are in the VAR room and the on-pitch official. Uh, that you do better than you would do if it was called fairly. Mm -hmm. um, um, I would just like to go back to the the elbow on Tommy Asu. We saw something very similar in the fixture last year with Mane and Kieran Tierney. Yes, um, and it was it was almost identical with uh, a an elbow to an elbow to the face. Um, and nothing was done last year either. So there's there's part of me that's that's kind of like not surprised anymore, especially when it comes to us. I know it sounds like a, a proper crybaby. Oh, we don't get anything um, 
kind of a, a response but there's there's been so many decisions we've seen over the last couple of years obviously i think last year is a perfect example where david louise got sent off uh, against wolves yeah for the 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 accidental clipping of the legs and it wasn't it wasn't even like it was intentional the players were just running at the same time and his the wolves players trailing leg hit david louise and it goes down and it's a red card and a penalty. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> we saw um, Harry Maguire wrestle, uh, I think it was against Leicester City, was, yeah. someone to the ground and only gets a yellow card for it. How, uh, there's just no, no consistency. And <clears throat> again, we've seen two elbows to the face for for Mane and he's co- completely got away with it. I, I, it's beggar's belief. But again, you can guarantee it if it was Granite Xhaka on a pitch and done something like that, he'd be off. <laughs> One hundred percent. Now the the thing is, and I think you've hit the clear <clears throat> now on the head there is is one is consistency, um, but the other thing I did think about is it wasn't reviewed by VAR, mm-hmm. uh, which means that it should be reviewed by a panel outside of the game, so he should receive a retrospective ban. Are they likely to do that? No, because then it doesn't fit the agenda of VAR is working and it's being done properly, and the, the officials are good. Um, now, we did watch the, the game with Phil, uh, mm-hmm. who, for those of you who remember him, is a Liverpool fan. Uh, and all three of us said about the referee, and before the game started, when we found out who it was, that actually we didn't like the referee, and he was awful. He was one of the worst referees that, that the Premier League has got. Um, Phil seemed to like him by the end of the game. Oh, he loved him. Um, so... BFS. <laughs> it's just... I don't... I think he he will admit if he watched it back again. I think he would he would have to admit that that there should have been some sort of action for the the, the elbow. Uh, and then even if it was a yellow card, yellow card, calm down, don't don't do it again. Keep control of what you're doing. And then the second one, which was going going through the player off the pitch, is then the second yellow. Yep. Um, so um, I don't I do think that he, he did deserve a yellow. Um, and we didn't see Mohamed Salah get the opportunity to dive, really, either, did we? No. He, he did do it at one point in the box. He just fell fell over from the ankles. But the referee, uh, in his infinite wisdom, just told him to uh, carry on. Get up. But I, I don't think that was necessarily from seeing the incident. I think he was oblivious to it and just Salah was flapping around on the floor and he was like, I didn't see anything. No, um, he was... Um... And it was, it was, I th- that may have been the way that he got around it with um, not having to book him or anything like that, because obviously he went down. Um, I can't remember. It might have been uh, against Nuno Tavares. Yes. Uh, w- went down in the box and, w- and was almost looking around and was shocked and stunned that he didn't get a decision against him, which I think it was nil nil at that particular point that the foul was committed or th- the foul was committed. And um, yeah, that that might have been may have been why he didn't get a booking. It was I was like, oh, just get up, sort of thing. Um, because had 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 someone watched it, they would have seen it was a blatant dive. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, there there would have to be some some course of action to to book him for for trying to con the referee. But once again, the 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 Liverpool bias uh, for VAR. Um, I think is evident to see again, and it wouldn't actually surprise me if um, if Liverpool do go ahead and win the league this year. I know Chelsea are obviously putting up a, a pretty good fight. Man City obviously still uh, right up there. I know there's the, I think there's about like three three or five points between first and third or something something stupid like that. Um, so it's de- it's definitely going to go down to the wire. But when you look at the likes of Man City playing Liverpool, playing Chelsea, Chelsea playing Liverpool, etc. They're going to be really interesting games because I think it's going to it's going to come down to those three playing each other for yeah. the title to be decided. I think, this and, year. I, and I think it will be decided by whoever gets the benefit of bad VAR decision or, or lack of VAR decisions, mm. like it was against Arsenal. Um, I, mm. I, I, here's the thing, right? I don't doubt that Liverpool should have won that game. They scored four goals and they were pretty dominant against you, but mm-hmm. it shouldn't have been by such a margin. No. Had had the player been sent off in the first half, would it have changed? Probably. Um, mm. But say, who knows? I th- to, to be honest, I think for 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 us looking at, at it 
uh, subjectively. I think that for us was a bad day at the office. Yes. I know going to Anfield's a very difficult place to go to and to get a result out. And I even said it last week that my my heart would or my heart was set on kind of like getting at least a point out of that game because I think three points at Liverpool would have been completely unrealistic to expect. Yeah, uh, We haven't won there in God knows how many games. Um, and I think that the, as as I mentioned at the start of the game, the, the gap in quality between the two sides, obviously Liverpool's team have been together for... Yeah on the majority of quite a few seasons now. Um, so I've obviously got that understanding. Again, we're a fairly inexperienced side when you look at the, the, the players that we've got playing for us and a very youthful. I think we've got younger squads in the, the Premier League at the moment. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that was just one of those games. We didn't perform very well. Uh, there was the number of offside decisions, as you, as you mentioned, it's like playing or me playing FIFA. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was just a bad day at the office, and I think Aaron Ramsdale summed it up really well after the game that they're not going to mope around on it. You just got to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and and hopefully put another run together. Um, starting again this week against Newcastle, mm. and that's a very good actually little segue there, Mike. You play Newcastle. Did like you did. I, I did like it. Um, so, so should we do the predictions first? For next yes, week, And then come back to the points? Yes, yeah, definitely. Let's, so, let's um, change it up a little bit. Mix it up. Keep it fresh. <laughs> Capital PH. Um, right, so 12.30 Saturday, Arsenal take on Newcastle. Mm -hmm. um, this is a game I'm a little bit apprehensive about. Obviously, um, uh, Eddie Howe's just come in as the new manager for Newcastle after a bit of a torrid time under Steve Bruce. Um, they haven't uh, yet picked up a win um, so far this season, actually, I don't think, unless they got one against Spurs earlier on. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, Newcastle... In fact, no, they haven't. They haven't won a game yet, so they've picked up six draws and six losses. Um I, th I think it's only going to be a matter of time before Newcastle start picking up points. But I don't think it's going to be until after the January transfer window. I think there's uh, some deadwood that he needs to kind of sort out at the club. Mm -hmm. But after the heavy defeat from Liverpool, are we going to kind of stick to our word and kind of dust ourselves off and, and try and go for it again? Obviously, Joe Willett coming back to his former club. Uh, I also understand that apparently Newcastle are in... Uh, also considering Nicola Pepe um, in the January transfer window. Um, it's actually something I was speaking to someone about today, about Nicolas Pepe. Um, obviously, with the likes of uh, Emil Smith-Rowe, or the emergence of Emil Smith-Rowe over the last couple of seasons, and Bukaya Saka, yeah. he's kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit. And we, the amount of times I've mentioned it on this podcast about how inconsistent he is. I know he hit a bit of form going into, um, oh, sorry, coming towards the end of last season. And it was almost like you couldn't drop him. Um, yep. But I think, again, just looking at the pre-season and also the start of the season, once again, he was very hit and miss. So I think it's potentially one we need to kind of cut our losses on. Um, because the only thing I can see him really doing is either covering for any injuries. Yep. Or looking at um, some of the cup matches that we got, like obviously we've got the FA Cup starting uh, in a couple of weeks. So obviously the beginning of January, I think the third round starts, um, and he isn't want to going to want to stick around for that unless he's just one of these players that are happy to pick up his paycheck. Um, but it it could be it could be a challenging game. Obviously they have got a lot of pace in the team. They have got some goals within the team. I think some of the results they've had recently have been fairly high scoring games like a 3-3 three, three, a 2-2 two, two, that sort of thing um but i think for us we are going to get back to winning ways i think newcastle will make it a bit tricky but i'm going to go for a 3-1 for us on that one Ooh, okay i'm going to be slightly different because that's sort of the, the the way i thought about it i think pepe you've hit the nail on the head there if you're using if you're using a european competition as well you need a squad depth but you're not and He's an inconsistent performer at best, isn't he? Um, so you may see him transfer. That'd be an interesting one if, you, if you've got that one, right? You'll probably sell him and then be linked with him again because you, you link to every player. <laughs> yeah. um, what do I think? Newcastle again. What did they? What was their result of the weekend? 
Was it a draw? Uh, draw. Yep. I think uh, so they played. Bear with me. <sighs> because you're at home, they, aren't you? They Brentford three three. Yes, we are. <sighs> See, Eddie Howe wasn't at that game. Will he be at the one at the weekend? Probably not, because he'll still be isolating if he's. It's a ten a seven day isolation, isn't it? Uh, so he may be just back. Um, so I think they'll be a little bit lacklustre. I think their new manager bounce may last a little bit longer because of that. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that actually it's only his staff in then when the new boss comes in, everyone's just got to step it up again to impress him. Um, but again, I think you were... Ramsdale was value for money. You've been very composed recently. And I don't think Newcastle are as... Uh, prolific when they've got the ball. Um, so I'm going to go 2 1 to Arsenal. Um, okay. Just for the fact of, of, although Newcastle are not prolific, neither are you. I think mm -hmm. you, you, that's the bit you're lacking is that sort of clinical uh, eye, the, the sort of dead eye in front of goal that, that is going to get you 30 goals a season. So the thing that I do find astonishing is that we're currently sitting on sitting in fifth with a minus four goal difference. Yeah. I, uh, I know, so obviously we have scraped through a couple of wins on that, and obviously there's been a couple of draws as well. Um, but I find it astonishing that we're sitting on a minus four. It just goes to show you for the games that we have lost, we've been we've had our asses kicked. I think it was like a four nil or three nil against City, three nil against Chelsea. Um, more new at Liverpool yeah it, it's it's crazy but again for for the season we've we've had we've been a bit hit and miss in front of goal as yeah. as you mentioned and then next is then City versus West Ham so a top of the table clash um, now here's the thing I want to say yeah we'll go out and give them a game but I think David Moyes will have them well drilled again but City played Everton at the weekend and never got out of second gear and won 3-0. Yep. Um, we beat we did beat City a couple of weeks ago in, in the cup, but different goalkeeper, obviously, in a couple of rotations of, of players. I think that we're going to lose this game. I think we might nick a, a, a goal, but I'm going to go 3-1 City. And it pains me to say that. I feel uh, this, this it, is where the, the season starts to get hard for us. We'll we'll have a look at the the run of fixtures you got in a sec. Um, to be honest, mate, there's there's not really much more I can say from what you've just said. Um, obviously, you have mentioned you get uh, you've got a bit of a tough run of fixtures coming in. Um, obviously, we've had the international breaks as well. People coming back from that. Um, you played a lot of fixtures already this season, uh, including your European games. As you mentioned, City didn't really get out of second gear. Um, I think, obviously, playing or them playing at home, I think it could potentially be bad news for West Ham on this one. I'm going to go for four one. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's waiting to, if we if we're resilient, if we can nick a draw, then I, I I'd have to say that's you you we've got a result there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, am I confident? Not really. <laughs> but there is another big game at the weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. So we we see we mentioned at the the top of the show that Ollie's no longer at the wheel. Uh, but two shell is, and he's doing it right. He's he's showing Ollie how it should have been done, because Chelsea take on Manchester United. So we're going to have a bonus game this week. Uh, so what yep. what do you think, Mike? <coughs> um. Obviously, we, we did see when Oli took over the wheel initially on his interim basis um, at Manchester United, there was a bit of a new manager bounce. Um, but on the other hand, as you mentioned, uh, Thomas Tuchel's doing it very right. Obviously, the uh, when he was appointed last year, uh, midway through the season, um, it did seem to be that he was drawing in Chelsea to be one of the teams that to, to kind of beat um in the league and obviously i think they did quite well in the end last season i think they finished third um but 
as as I mentioned earlier, it's it's going to be a three horse race this year between Chelsea, Liverpool, and Manchester City. But I don't think there's going to be enough time to change whatever system um, that Manchester United are currently have in place at the moment. They have got on paper what should be an absolutely ridiculous squad. Yep. Um, but it just doesn't seem to be gelling at the moment. And I don't think with um, his experience, I know it's only on an interim basis. Um, and I know he was the the assistant um, under Solskjaer, but I just can't see him being able to man manage these players or no. these egos um, in order to, to kind of get a tune against a very informed Chelsea team. Um, so I'm going to go for a three nil Chelsea on this one. Oh, it's interesting. Now, um, I think you hit now on the head there in regards to Carrick. I think the only thing United have got going for them is Lukaku and Werner are still both out injured. Um, so if they had both of them fit, I think Chelsea are a much more dangerous looking outfit. Um, obviously they're still getting results. David De Gea's comments concern me a little bit. We don't know what to do with the ball. We don't know how to defend. Uh, we just don't know what we're doing. Um, which for a professional footballer with a team that's played together for quite a while is quite concerning. <laughs> yeah. uh, the thing I think that that that, uh, Solskjaer, that Carrick will do, that Solskjaer never did, is drop the big egos. I think we could see the return of Dean Henderson in goal. Um, I think we could see an, a very young, attacking, fast lineup, and just go, hit him on the counter, everything, ball over the top, make it a race. Um, because if they do that, you think you've got the likes of Greenwood, Sancho, Martial, who've not really been getting the games, Lingard, who like to run uh, with the ball, without the ball, and chase it, could make for an interesting spectacle. Um, do I think it'll be enough? No. But I, I reckon... I'm going to go... Oh... I'm going to go two all. I think they could nick a couple of goals, but I don't think they'll have enough to, to hold out for the entire game against Chelsea. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Mm. But I did say that Watford would beat, beat United. I thought it would be to 2-0. It was to, to 4-1. So I wish I'd put a bet on because I might have won some money. <laughs> uh, but that brings us on to last week's predictions and a points mm -hmm. update. So give us yep. give us that rundown. Uh, I'm not sure I want to, if I'm being completely honest. Um, right, so I'll start off with the the overall scores. So at the start of this week, um, oh sorry, at the start of last week, I was on 21 points. You were on 17. Yes. Uh, for the season totals. Uh, Wolves versus West Ham. Uh, it was a game that I think, uh, sorry, from the predictions, both of us thought it was going to be a bit of a tough one, possibly a draw. So you went for 2 2, I went for 1 1. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know the score was 1 0 to Watford, so zero points there for the pair of us. Um, Liverpool versus Arsenal. I obviously went with, um, with my heart on this one and was hoping to get a point out of it, so I went for 1. Uh, Ian, you went for three nil. So um, the, obviously, we know the score was four nil. Uh, so uh, one point for you, zero points for me. Is that right? I'm joking. No, I was going to say, is that right. that's what you told me different. <laughs> you told me different earlier. You got my hopes up there. <laughs> so no, you you hit the nail on the head. Four nil. Uh, so three points to you, and zero points to me. So the for the week's results. In you finished the week on three points. I finished with zero. So the scores now as follows. Ian, you are now on 20 points. And I am still just in the lead very marginally on 21. So he's clawing uh, it back. It's happening. It's happening. It is happening. I, yeah. I'm going to have another trophy. I've got, I've got a, a bit like the FA Cup. Like I've got an, a version. A replica of, trophy. A replica there of the FA, <laughs> FA Fever Day trophy, not the FA trophy, uh, because <laughs> I've not managed to win it back off of Dan yet. But no, nope. maybe so. If he's thrown it out, I'm not going to be very happy. Well, well that, that means there's, there, there, have, there would have to be some sort of punishment, wouldn't there? Um, yep. But yeah, sure. so um, we talked about a tough run of fixtures. Mm -hmm. I want to say our fixture list is Man City away, Brighton at home. 
Chelsea away. And then I want to say we've got Man United. You've got us soon as well. Oh, no, it's Arsenal, sorry. So, so in, in, in those couple of games, if we can... I looked at our next five games. If we can get five points out of it, I think we're all right. Because Brighton, okay, we 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 drew drawn with a couple of times. They're usually sort of a little bit of a bogey team for us. And then you look at Man City, okay, it, sort of wishful thinking is oh, if we can get a draw, that's a result. Um, then Chelsea again, you look at them this season and go, mm, could go either way. I mean, it was a kickstart of that first season. David Moyes come back in to change the season round. Could give way, and especially under Tuchel, you're like, okay, get a point, that's a good result. And then you play Arsenal, which if you played like you did against Liverpool, will win. If you play like you have done the last sort of eight games, then we'll probably both end up with a point being very defensive. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a difficult one. Um, I, I think the, the big thing is, obviously, we're, we're banned from the next away game uh, this week. In Europe, which is sort of unfair. There's a lot of unrest about it. Um, then we've got to play Rapid Vienna. No, we're playing Rapid Vienna. Then we've got to play Dynamo Zagreb at home, but we may have already qualified for that point. So maybe you might see a lot of squad rotation there, mm -hmm. um, which is good. But I think the vital thing here for West Ham now is the January transfer window. Um, so maybe if I get a chance, I might look at doing a little video as to players we've been linked with and what they could do for us. Um, but yeah, so it's it's interesting. We need a we need a central defender. Craig Dawson is not a starter. He's a good player, uh, and he's done really well for us. But he's not. You don't want him in your starting lineup every game for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. A lot of West Ham fans are calling for Diop to start and maybe get some of that going, but that. He Diop, one of those players who had a lot of potential, but I don't think he'll ever be great. So we've been linked with a few players. We've been linked with Kate Lacar, um, who I don't know much about. He did all right in the Euros for Croatia, and we've been linked with um, a bloke from Florentina in in the summer, um, Mezov Mezov or I don't know. I can't I don't know what his actual name is. Um, but that'd be good. We've also been linked with Jesse Lingard. The one thing we haven't been linked with, Mike, is a proper striker. Because although Antonio got a charter jet back from Jamaica, he was awful. I watched the extended highlights. And again, he was awful after the international break. And he's due to fly off to Jamaica to play in their next international break bits, which is not an international break for everyone else. And he's got like six games in January and February. So we need a new striker. Because I don't mm -hmm. think he's going to stay fit for the entire season. Um, but yeah, I've, I've gone from being really happy as a West Ham fan to really pessimistic again. Didn't take long, did it? One result. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did. You did. Say, what was it? You said West Ham fans are fickle. We're fickle. Said, yeah, um... we are fickle. <laughs> See, we've looking at our next few fixtures. Obviously, we've got Newcastle um, on Saturday. Then we've got. Manchester United, Everton, Southampton, and then you boys uh, on the 15th of December. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I um, I think we've got some winnable games in that. Uh, there could potentially be some banana skins. Um, obviously, we don't know what's happening with the manager situation currently uh, at Manchester United. Obviously, we only know Carrick is uh, filling the shoes for, for the moment until they find their interim manager. Um, so there may be that kind of new manager bounce. Uh, obviously, that remains to be seen. Everton um, have had a bit of a, a hit and miss this season. Mm -hmm. uh, Southampton, again, it depends on which Southampton turns up. And then uh, West Ham, obviously, again, flying high at the moment. Um, but obviously, with your tough run of fixtures, is um, is that kind of like going to be the start of your downfall well, you, um, you mentioned it. You almost hit the nail on the head. I thought you were going to come out of it automatically. It's, uh, we're flying high, but just like our dreams, they will fade and die. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's that song, isn't it? So, mm. it is going to happen at some yeah, point. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks. It's really going to be an interesting. And 
to be honest, I think I'm a little bit more excited about this season. The year that Liverpool won it, it was a bit of a boring season in terms of by the time we all went into lockdown, they pretty much won the league already. Well, so I think it wasn't that's... Really... I, I honestly think that's why we went into lockdown because no one wanted to see it. They they just scrapped the season. <laughs> that's what the government thought. But no, this is not going to do the country any good. Uh, it's ruined the economy and everything else. We come out of Europe, try and stop it. I mean, just oh, bloody Liverpool. <laughs> um, but obviously, it got um, got a bit more competitive last year. Um, but I think this this season is probably the closest I remember it for a long, yes. long time, and it's making it very interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, obviously we keep doing the podcast. We'll keep talking about the fixes and stuff on a weekly basis, and um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed because that always helps. Our aim is to get to the end of the January transfer window and have a hundred subscribers, and we're not far away. So that's all good. Please help. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's been much else gone on in football this week, really, is there? Nope. I found some safety glasses the other day. The only, there we go. The only trouble is, right, here's the thing with safety glasses, is I wear glasses. So when I'm wearing these, I have to take these off, which means that whatever I'm doing, I need to be safe for. I then can't see. So <laughs> not as safe Can't as productive. Me. Yeah, not as safe as what one, <laughs> one may see. I've, 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 got, I've got my eyes, but I've no longer got a hand because I've topped it off. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so until then, then, the weekend's fixtures have gone. No more international breaks, only Premier League. And Europe, and Europe, because we're fucking massive. Um, I've been Ian. I've been Mike. We have been on the air, and we are FDT TV, and we will see you next week. Thank you very much.